Good morning. Welcome to Bible Mornings. I am Greg, and I am glad that you're with us. Uh, we are in the middle of reading through Amos, and if you are new to Bible Mornings, what we do almost every day is we uh, kind of look for about 10 minutes or so closely at a passage in Scripture. Uh, because we've been doing Amos, we do that a little bit different. Uh, we read uh, large chunks of Amos and kind of go through it fairly quickly. That's that's on purpose. Uh, and then we'll we'll periodically like slow down and look very closely at something. But uh, today we're going to go through Amos chapter 4, and I'm glad that you're with us to do that. It's a really interesting chapter with some really interesting images and ideas. So if you have your Bibles, you can open to Amos 4 and follow along that way. Otherwise, I will put the readings on the screen so you can you can jump in there. All right, but before we do any of that, we're going to go ahead and pray together. This is a prayer we pray every morning as a way of sort of uh, keeping our heads and our hearts in the right spot when we approach Scripture. So join me, if you will. From the cowardice that dares not face new truth, from the laziness that is contented with half-truth, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth, good Lord, deliver us. All right. Now, if you haven't been following along in Amos, you can do that pretty easy. I've got some some uh, some of the older stuff we've been doing, uh, the, the chapters right around Amos 4, 1 and 2. You can check those out. Um, but now we are going to jump into Amos 4. If you remember from the kind of overview one, uh, 3 and 4 sort of mark this transition in Amos. The It's kind of a collection of writings that Amos has done, uh, and that'll sort of make sense as we go through it. So starting in chapter 4, verse 1, Hear this words, you cows of Bashan, who are on Mount Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to their husbands, Bring something to drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness. The time is surely coming upon you when they shall take you away with hooks, even the last of you with fish hooks. Through breaches in the wall you shall leave, each one straight ahead, and you shall be flung into Harmon, says the Lord. Come to Bethel and transgress, to Gilgal, and multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Bring a thank offering of, of leavened bread and proclaim free will offerings. Publish them. For so you love to do, O people of Israel, says the Lord your God. I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places, yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. And I also withheld the rain from you. When there were still three months to the harvest, I would send rain on one city and send no rain on another city. One field would be rained upon, and the field on which it did not rain withered. So two or three towns wandered to one town to drink water, and were not satisfied. Yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. I struck you with blight and mildew. I laid waste your gardens and your vineyards. The locusts devoured your fig trees and your olive trees. Yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. I sent among you a pestilence after the manner of Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword. I carried away your horses, and I made the stench of your camp go up into your nostrils. Yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. I overthrew some of you. As when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a brand snatched from the fire. Yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. Therefore thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For lo, the one who forms the mountains creates the wind, reveals his thoughts to mortals, makes the morning darkness, and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. All right, so there's... There's a pattern we want to catch, right? That the pattern is pretty simple. That God has done things to Israel, and Israel has missed those things. They've Those signs and markers and things that Israel should have recognized as God's actions, Israel chalked up to something else. I don't know what. We don't have those accounts. But we know that God kept doing these things, and Israel kept missing them, right? For whatever that reason is. And then we have this haunting refrain. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. We we said it over and over and over again. Uh, I think it's actually in this section here. Uh, yet you did not return to me. Yet you did not return to me. Yet you did not return to me. That's the that's sort of the haunting refrain. One of the things that's interesting in this whole section in Amos that we want to catch is even God's punishments here, right? Even God bringing. Uh, famine and death and drought and all these different things that God freely claims he's done, uh, they're all with the intention of bringing Israel back to him, right? They're all with the intention of God's people learning to rely on God. 
And God's people in this section continue to not do that. Yet you did not return to me. Yet you did not return to me. Yet you did not return to me. And God sounds in this section of Amos like a frustrated parent who says, I've did everything I could do. I've tried over and over and over and over again, and you just keep ignoring me. And worse than that, if we go back to the beginning of Amos chapter 4, not only do you ignore me, you keep going to these other places to have sacrifices and sin, right? to, to worship other gods instead of me. That's what's going on at the end of Amos 4, 1 through 5. And he tells them, you love to bring your sacrifices every morning. You tithe every three days. You have all these aspects of religious life. Right? You bring a thank offering. You proclaim free will offerings. You publish them. You make them huge everywhere because you love to do that stuff. You love being religious, but you ignore me. Right? You love all of the practices that I've given you, but you ignore the one who gave them to you in the first place. You do not return to me. There's a sense in, in chapter 4 here of what else am I supposed to do? Right? What else can I possibly do to you and for you to get you to return to me. And in that sense, you get this really uh, important sort of biblical understanding of what exile is. Exile is not God getting rid of God's people, right? What happens in scripture, exile becomes the worst case scenario that God just has to remove them from the land because like we mentioned yesterday, the land and the temple become these sort of crutches that God's people lean on. That as long as we have these things, God can never really punish us. God can never really be mad with us. God can never really be unhappy with us. As long as, as long as we have the temple, as long as we have our prayer books, as long as we have our communion services, whatever it is that we sort of trust in more than we trust in God, as long as we have scripture maybe, right? As long as something like that takes God's place, then God can never really be that unhappy with us. That's the way we sort of convince ourselves this works. But exile becomes God taking even that away from us, right? Exile becomes removing us from those things that we trusted in more than God. And it's it's sort of God's last sort of great act of mercy, even though it feels like this horrific, uh, painful thing. Because it is horrific and painful, but it's, it's not just for itself, right? It's not just punishment. And in fact, in throughout scripture, God doesn't punish that way, right? That's not who God is. So when we look at this, uh, it mounts up even further, right? As we get to the very end of this section, he says, you did not return to me, you did not return to me, you did not return to me. He says, therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. This actually sounds a lot like the book of Job. If you think of the end of Job, when Job and God meet and have this, this enormous conversation out of the storm. For lo, the one who forms the mountains, creates the wind, reveals his thoughts to mortal, makes the morning darkness, and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God, the Lord, the God of hosts is his name. This God is the God that is going to come meet you. This is not a meek God or a quiet God or a a, a God that you can sort of manipulate and control. That's not the picture of God in this passage, right? This is the transcendent God who is above and other and different and separate from us. But even this God is not a God who's separate from relationship, right? Even this God reveals his thoughts to the mortals, right? Um, but this is not a position you want to find yourself in when God says, prepare to meet me this way. This is not a... Uh, this is not the sort of exciting kind of, oh good, this is the this is the sort of stuff we pray for in worship songs where we ask to meet God and to be present. This, this is not that kind of meeting. This is the kind of meeting that is not going to end well for us, right? And this is this is what is being set up in the book of Amos. This is the the pattern and the recurring thing. So what do we think about this, right? That there's all kinds of signs, there's all kinds of things that are going on in the world that Israel does not chalk up to God's punishment, does not chalk up to God drawing us back to himself, but they just chalk it up to whatever happens, right? And then God says, I tried. I gave you all these options and you never came back to me. I wonder what is going on in our lives that we don't give God credit for, that God might be using to draw us back to himself. It's a trickier question. Um, think about that. Pray about that and, uh, and we'll come back to that, I'm sure, later. All right, that's what we have for this morning. Uh, if you enjoy this, please, as per usual, spread it around. Tell your friends about it. Uh, let people know, hey, there's this great thing we do every morning for about 10 minutes. Uh, give us a chance to look at scripture together. 
Um, if you like it, go ahead and subscribe, and we will uh, we'll see you uh, we'll see you in Amos chapter five. All right.